Hello and welcome to your meditation practice as part of the Open Heart Project. I am very happy that you are here. I'm very happy that I am here and I'm very happy that we can practice meditation together. We're going to sit together today for our customary 10 minutes and we're going to start in a moment. So please get settled on your cushion or your chair. Both are equally good. And if you have chronic neck or back pain, you could lie down. Um, though it is best to sit up if possible, it's not best if it hurts you. So um, just, you know, wanted to let you know that. Um, as we get settled, I want to share with you a few very brief thoughts on the sixth step along the Noble Eightfold Path that we have been exploring in recent weeks. Um, uh, the Buddha suggested that there are eight steps that we could take to attain complete liberation from suffering. So at least that might make you want to see what they are. Um, and we've been going through them one by one. And if you would like, you can go back and catch up on them or any ones you missed, but you do not have to. It is not necessary. Each step stands alone and you're more than welcome to just dive in right here. So the first two steps along the path are right view and right intention. Next, the next three steps relate to uh, ethical conduct, right speech, right action, and right livelihood. And now we get to the first of the final three steps along the path, yes, yeah, six, seven, and eight, that relate to the way you hold your mind as you go about your everyday life. Um, and this is very important because as we know, the way we hold our mind is the way we see our world. So right effort is about making the effort continually to bring your attention back to the present moment and not allow yourself to get overly lost in what Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche, the Tibetan meditation master who brought the Shambhala teachings to the West, calls discursive gossip. And by discursive gossip, I mean things like, or I presume he means things like, uh, I don't like her, she doesn't like me, I, this will not be good for me, this will be bad for me, I don't like those people, if only they hadn't done this then we wouldn't have that, and then six years ago I said this and it resulted in that and now I'm screwed and, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not su saying that there aren't things that go on in our mind that aren't extremely valuable fundamentally powerful and wonderful inspiration and intuition and creative uh, insight and so on. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about the chatter, the blah, 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 that constantly goes on, at least in this person's mind. Uh, and that steals my attention away from the present moment. So right effort is the exerting the discipline of letting that go and coming back to what is happening right now, whether it is good, bad, ugly, all of the above, none of the above. So in that sense, it's a very fierce thing to commit oneself to. It's very brave. Uh, one way to um, employ right effort is to use these two steps that, again, Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche outlined uh, as part of his instruction to his meditation students about how to hold their minds in meditation. And he calls this technique, touch and go. Touch and go. So when you're sitting in meditation, which we're going to do in a moment, you will see, or have seen if you've sat before, that thoughts arise to distract you. And they're endless. And who knew there were so many thoughts, up, so much going on up there. And the instruction with your thoughts is not to punch them in the face, you know, uh, so that they are knocked out, is not to hack them with knives or throw them in the trash or shove them aside or pretend they're not there. That is not the instruction perhaps unsurprisingly. Rather, we could touch our thoughts with our attention. And what that means is, before you shove the, the thought out of the way, 
touch it with your awareness. Just take its measure very, very um, minutely and quickly, like this is a big thought, this is a small thought, not, not weighing the value of the content at all, but just, oh, this one hurts, this one is boring, this one is, seems crazy, this one came from far away. Just touch it ever so briefly with your attention, enough to, to recognize it, and then let it go. If we let go without touch, we end up shoving things to the side. And that is not the advised meditation technique. So the way this has, a, a, what's the word I'm looking for? Application in everyday life is you go to a meeting and people are talking about things you think are silly. And you're like, how am I gonna get my ideas in here? Uh, or tell them they're crazy. And, oh, that'll never work because I said this six years ago and they didn't like it and blah, blah, blah. Instead of getting lost in that, you touch it like, oh, anxiety, frustration. And then you let go and come back to the present moment, which, where you actually have a chance of saying something intelligent because you're paying attention. So right effort in this sense is very powerful. It is the step by which you bring your awareness into your actual experience over and over again so that you are participating in your own life as opposed to your thoughts about your life. So that's a good thing to do. And what else are you gonna do? So right effort. Uh, I hope that's useful. And without further ado, let's begin our practice today. So as we begin our practice, let's bring our attention to the room that we're in and just look around for a moment. Here you are in your life, on your seat. Feel your body weight. Give your weight to the cushion or chair and say to yourself, now is my time to meditate and everything else can wait and boom, here I am. The hands can rest on the legs, palms down. Let the shoulders relax. Let there be a quality of upliftedness in the back body, holding you up, and a quality of softness in the front body, your belly, your chest, your throat. Connect with their inherent softness and let them relax. The mouth is closed, which is awesome because you don't have to talk. And it is awesome to be engaged in something where you don't have to contribute anything. So please enjoy your quietude. The breath comes in and out through the nose. You already know how to breathe, so that is the extent of that instruction. And the eyes remain open because this is a practice of wakefulness. And the gaze is cast down to a spot that is comfortable for you. And rather than staring at that spot, allow your vision to stream from your eyes like the rays of the sun and mix with space. And the crown of the head can reach up a little bit like you could touch the sky. And the sit bones continue to reach down Feel yourself breathing. 
because that basically is all that's going on right now. Feel the expansion of the in-breath, the contraction of the out-breath, the little gap at the end of the out-breath, and then how the next in-breath just happens. I promise you do not have to try. So just notice your breathing. Feel your breathing. We're not trying to stop thinking, of course. And if you notice that your mind has become absorbed in thought, that's no problem. In fact, it's excellent because you just woke up. So instead of just shoving the thought out of the way, touch it with your attention. Take its temperature, as it were. A good thought, a bad thought, a big one, a small one. Nothing more than that almost like you're feeling its textural quality, and then let go and come back to your breath. And in this sense, we are practicing nothing other than right effort and training ourselves to come back. So we'll sit together.
Thank you so much for your practice, and thank you so much for practicing together.